In this video, we're going to look at making a modular brick kit uh, using a high to low poly workflow. Uh, and this will cover a range of programs, um, and it's a really simple method, it shouldn't take long at all. So, to start with, we create a uh, little modular brick kit. Um, I've got a, a long piece, a short piece, and a corner piece. And uh, these are really simple, and they have a basic unwrap as well. Um, there's some things we need to do before taking them out of Maya because the next thing we'll do is take these into ZBrush and sculpt them up to make our high poly versions. But a, a few things you need to know before taking stuff like this into ZBrush is that uh, when ZBrush subdivides the mesh it will shrink the mesh as well, it will soften the uh, lowest subdivision. And so the ZBrush mesh will begin to um, begin to change and be quite a different shape than your original mesh, making it more difficult to uh, project to that original mesh. Um, so a few things we're gonna do to uh, reduce the amount of movement and make it easily more easily sculptable. So if we were to um, mesh smooth this at the moment, you can see it changes shape quite a lot. Now it does have the beveled edges, so it does stay in a, um, cube shape rather than turn into a sphere uh, but still there's quite a lot of stretching in the middle and the edges are not very defined uh, in the center here you see that because we have no subdivisions we have these kind of stretch polys which means that when we come to do some sculpting on the corners um, we'll get like a jagged low poly um, result some of you may have discovered this already when doing zbrush work and so it's best to, if you're going to bring something into ZBrush, even if you remove these edges at a later date, it's best to subdivide your mesh as close to an even layout of polys as possible. So try to get all your polys uh, as square as possible. So to do this, I'm just going to use the um, multi-cut tool and make sure that edge flow is not ticked on so it doesn't move the mesh. And I'm just going to add a few edge loops to try and help these remain um, square so if we take a look at the unwrap at the moment you can see that's quite neat uh, however when we bring this back in when once we've sculpted on this we will have to update this um, because the shape of the mesh will change subtly and this will need to be relaxed in accordance so once we are ready to take these for sculpting we can set them all and export this selection and name it uh, bricks uh, and it's good to know that uh, normally if you make a brick kit or a cobble kit or some sort of stone collection that you can then use to uh, rebuild into different shapes you probably do a lot more than this and even maybe have some broken pieces um, trying to make yourself a most, more comprehensive kit than these just three pieces uh, so we open up ZBrush and in ZBrush we want to import them bricks so we should have something like this and at the moment these are all one sub tool you could separate them into separate sub tools it does make it easier to sculpt on but uh, as these have come in and they were not uh, attached together in the OBJ file they will have separate polygroups so we just turn polygroups on we should be able to uh, control shift and click each one to hide uh, each piece so if we then uh, subdivide this so we can start sculpting on it you can see the shape changes uh, as we subdivide it so if we come back to subdivision one you can see these uh, look quite different than the original mesh the much bigger edges much softer we could have stopped some of this happening if we added more closer restraining edges around the bevels uh, they would have retained the original shape a lot more clearly but as I want these to be kind of soft cobbled looking bricks anyway it doesn't really matter uh, this is actually uh, a better result for me so we got to subdivision 5 um, at the moment one of 72,000 so I'm going to divide that again up to 300,000 this should give me enough detail to uh, do some quick sculpting so in here you can see I have a lot of extra brushes installed uh, and there's a lot of like uh, 
good brushes for doing rock details so I've got slash brushes rubble brushes uh, rock noise and stuff like that uh, but I'm just going to use the ones the standing ones that come with ZBrush uh, and I've done this very many times in industry um, I've made rock kicks kits for trailers for uh, smite and um, world of war tanks and other various trailers and my go-to brushes for these were mainly trim dynamic and another one that I'll show you in a minute so uh, the first thing I'm going to do and I'm going to do this really quickly this would take a lot longer if I was going to do it uh, properly but the main gist of it is I would start each brick and go around the edges and this is to create quite a um, disheveled and chipped soft edged look as uh, so you can imagine some old kind of uh, Victorian cobbles that I've seen a lot of wear and tear and I'd go around the edges just chipping off stuff and generally making the shape a bit more rugged Again, I'm doing this super fast. It would take a lot more time and precision over this. This is just as an example. So with these kits, what you're looking at doing as well, uh, I mean, it works better when you've got uh, a lot more uh, separate individual pieces um, but the the kind of thing that you'd be looking to do with this is, is reusability um, so you might have you don't want any you don't really want many details that stand out so that you can see the re uh, repeated pattern uh, when it's all together when you've got many of these in a row you don't want a, a slash that you can see clearly that stands out and makes it look um, repetitive but you uh, do have a few other options like details you can have on the top can be vastly different than details you have on the bottom um, or even on every single side and this gives you the opportunity to rotate each brick again and make it look like a completely different brick so you from uh, two bricks you can get um, two or three times the amount of uh, randomness at this point um, going to just create a couple of uh, deeper marks and take an edge out you don't want to make anything too different if your meshes are, have details on them that are too deep or uh, too vivid you may need to remesh so you won't be able to reuse the uh, original mesh you'd have to uh, retopologize so this can add a lot more work so it's good to think about that kind of thing in the beginning stages when you're making your base mesh if you think you want a big slash or a crumbled corner that's quite deep then model that in before you bring it into ZBrush this will save you having to remodel it at a later stage now the second brush that I found very useful for doing rocks and hard surface bricks anything that has an organic hard surface shape is in if you click on lightbox and go to brushes Uh, you can see there's a lot of brushes here that aren't in the um, main brush palette and one very useful one is in trim and in the corner it's called trim smooth border and this uh, takes the normal directions of the um, polys that you select and makes them very flat and cuts in nicely uh, so you can see here if you tap as you model it creates a very nice organic rock shape and you can get some really nice crumbly looking shapes for this OK, 
Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now on this. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted is if you go to the surface and go to noise, you can apply some surface noise to break up the uh, softness of the brick. to mesh um, but this is also something that you can uh, derive from substance painter so I'm going to leave it at this for now uh, so we go back to our subdivision levels and go down to subdivision level one you can see that the shape of this is now quite a lot different than our original mesh so we are going to export the subdivision one and I'm just going to rename this P2 and then I'm going to also export the high poly mesh uh, this is still only 300,000 active points uh, here, so we don't really need to um, decimate this as it wouldn't really make much difference and 300,000 is absolutely fine. Okay, then we're going to go back to Maya and import our new low poly mesh. So if I turn off surface, you can see that the new low poly um, is quite a lot different than the old. So there are some areas like here that it would struggle to bake from. Now you can still bake down onto the old low poly mesh if for some reason you wanted it to be more um, rigid and square in shape. but. Uh, you would have to increase the envelope a lot more and you might get some errors in this. Now these are really simple shapes so I don't think it would be too hard to bake down onto but um, we are going to get rid of the old low poly and stick to the new low high poly, uh, the new low poly. A couple of things we want to do before we take it out of here to bake on is remove some of these restraining edges that we don't need anymore. So there's a bit of um, a curve here that I want to keep so I need to be careful what I remove. Remove that one and this outer one Yeah, so you're just going around neatening up the mesh, taking out what edges um, we don't really need. And then we need to go into the UV map and relax some of this because it's still quite tight compared to how it is now which is quite open on those bevels so to do that I'm just going to select all the UV shells and in the UV toolkit editor I'm going to optimize and you can see that's spread out and relaxed a lot more I'm just going to make sure that it's still within the bounds of the tile and make sure nothing's overlapping straighten out some of these as well do. Make sure 
Oh, there's no stretching anywhere. Okay. And one more thing we want to do before taking these into Substance Painter is unlock the normals. Uh, so, unlock normals, and I'm also going to soften all the edges. So we can export this out now as the um, Bricks 01 V2, the low poly. Just save over that one. And then we want to open Substance Painter. Uh, file new, and I'm going to leave it in Unreal Engine 4, 2K, and I'm going to select that one that we just exported, 01 V2. Okay. So you can see this here. And then Texture Set Settings, I'm going to go to Bake Mesh Maps, and I'm going to load in my High Poly from ZBrush. I'm going to change anti alias into 2x2, two two, and uh, leave everything else. Now we can see we've got the details onto our low poly. Uh, so just check everything over, make sure that there's no clipping of the details. Uh, everything looks okay for this one. So now we can texture this however we see fit. I'm just going to shove a uh, concrete layer on here. And I'm going to make that darker. Duplicate it, make it lighter. I just want to pick out the edges so we can see some of those details more clearly. Going to drop in edges onto there and change that mask a little bit. Right, so that's a very simple um, brick set. So we can export those textures now. I'm going to just export them as Unreal Engine 4. So now we've got a simple brick kit that has textures and normal information and lots of detail and we can rearrange these into um, curbs or monuments or whatever you can think of. And the same process can be done for tiles, large big concrete slabs, old um, Mayan floor tiles, whatever you can think of really. Um, and they can be rearranged and span around so that you can get uh, many differences out of just a few bricks. And like I say, other things to add to this would be some crumbled versions of the bricks as well. So before taking this into ZBrush, if you could cut a couple of edges or corners off and make a few um, small tertiary bricks as well, it can give you a much bigger, more comprehensive kit that you can then reuse in different assets and different scenes um, throughout your portfolio.